So what is going on everybody, Fernando Silva here with another video and today what I want to do is walk you guys through what's on my iPad Pro. So I currently have the M1 12.9 inch baseline model, so 128 gigabyte version iPad Pro and I want to walk you guys through exactly what widgets, what applications and then what services that I use to get everything done, whether it's work related, YouTube related, leisure related, maybe some games as well. So stay tuned, grab a snack, maybe a little notepad or something to write down some of these applications and without further ado, Let's get into it. So what I figured we should do is actually just pull up the iPad Pro screen right here. And we're just going to walk through it live, show you guys exactly what's on my home screen, what widgets I use, what services, things like that. So the first thing we're going to touch on are the widgets, because as you can see, they take up pretty much half the home screen for me. And I did my best to kind of keep my today view as best as possible, because like you guys can see, or as you guys heard, that with iPadOS 15, the today view is now gone, right? The only way to get it is if you swipe to the left and you can see that it's kind of there, but as you can see, I have no widgets there because I like to have them either on my actual screen or just not around at all. But to go from top left, we're gonna start with the weather app. So as you guys know, Apple does have their own weather app widget, but at the same time, let's say if I do wanna add the weather widget, so if I go all the way down here, add the weather widget, let's just add it anywhere, right? And if I click on the weather widget, then it takes me to Safari, it takes me to weather.com. So the app that I use or the widget that I use is an app called Weatherline. And sadly, Weatherline is no longer available on the App Store. About six, seven months ago, I saw a tweet that they got bought out, but that they were gonna still support people through 2021 or maybe 2022 because they do have a paid model and that's the one that I have. But you can see that this is the widget that I use. It gives you a linear graph of what the temperature is gonna be doing throughout the day. And if you click on it, as you can see, it doesn't have a dedicated iPad app, but this is my weather widget of choice. Unfortunately, sorry everybody, it's no longer on the App Store. So if you do have it, kudos to you. The next one that I have down here is actually just Google Calendar. It's what I use for work, so you can see that everything is kind of synced up in there. And I like how it gives you a breakdown of all the different meetings that I have. And then also, if it's a video chat meeting, you'll see a little video logo right there, which is nice. And then under there, then I have my finance applications, or at least my stock and investment applications. So here I have Public, which is an, an application that I use all the time, so if I click on it, you can see that yes, the market is getting destroyed today, but that's because of all the inflation and stuff like that. No need to worry, it's all about long-term gains, right? This is my stock investment app of choice. I absolutely love this one. It's a company called public.com. And the reason I like it is just because it's intuitive, it's very social friendly. So basically it's all about social investing. As you can see, it's, it's kind of like the Twitter of investing. You can see what people are doing. You can follow people. You can follow your favorite investors and see what they're invested on. You get to see what kind of stocks are watching and things like that. So, and the main reason I went with public over like Robinhood and other things like that is because Robinhood obviously has its hiccups and things like that. And I wanted to avoid that at all costs. And then also I'm not really day trading too much. This is all long-term growth. I still invest, I still dollar cost average, go in there every single day and put some money in there. But at the same time, I'm not buying and selling, buying and selling, I'm pretty much just buying. So if you guys do wanna check it out, I'll leave it linked in the description below, like I said, and if you guys sign up, we both get free stocks. But this is what we got, as you can see, very tech heavy and everything is in red right now, but to each their own. And then I actually have a smart stack here. So if I swipe down, you can see that I actually have my Coinbase on here. So this is my, my Coinbase portfolio. You can see I have some, some Algo, some VAT, some Anchor. You can see that everything also is in the red. But you guys know about Coinbase. If you don't, I'll leave a link in the description as well. The next widget that I have is actually called SubWidget. So SubWidget is exactly what it sounds like. It just gives you the amount of followers or subscribers that you have on YouTube and it gives you an update sort of in real time. It only updates when you hit increments of 100. So it won't show the subscriber count again or it won't update it again until it hits 30,100 subscribers, which is totally fine. And then the last two are really simple. We just have the battery widget, which teats their own. That's I just like to have that one. That's my like only real Apple native one that I keep on there. And then I have one by Mint. Mint is kind of like a net worth calculator. You pretty much assign it to all of your different bank accounts, all of your investment accounts, all of you know your debt accounts as well. So like your student loans and things like that. And it basically just aggregates everything and gives you what your net worth is and kind of keeps you in line with all your bills and stuff like that. You can even check your credit score if you want. And I just have their budget widget because they have a, a couple but I like to kind of see where I'm at from a July budget. And you can see we're already kind of close and we're only, we still have like 10 days left in July. So, so these are all the actual widgets that I have. As you can see, I have no other widgets anywhere else on the home screen. And I'm a very big proponent of keeping it as simple as possible. So I have all my main applications on the dock itself, my favorite widgets, and then my pretty much like leisure and then also some creative applications on the actual home screen. So, but before we continue, if you guys like this little wallpaper right here, we did create a bunch. So if you guys want to check them out, link in the description down below help support the channel. And then let's go to the actual dock itself. So on the dock, it's very self-explanatory. So I have the camera, which again, doesn't get, really get too, too much use, but I like to have it on there just in case. 
I have my messages, pretty self-explanatory. I have my Chime Bank, which is actually just a bookmark to go to the actual website itself. So if I click on here, it actually takes me to Safari and actually goes through that portal and makes me sign in through there. And that's just my bank of choice. I've shown it off a couple of times. And again, I'm gonna link everything down in the description below if you guys wanna test any of these out. And most of these are free, so that's awesome. Then we have the Photos application. And then I have two mail applications, right? I have Spike, which is what I use for pretty much YouTube. I use it for everything that isn't work related. So I have my YouTube on here, my like personal account is on here. And I really like Spike because it gives you a way to communicate with people in kind of like a chat format, even though it's still email. So it kind of takes away that situation that email is supposed to be a formal way of communication and kind of informalizes it and makes it easier to access people with email, which I think is awesome. And I've been using Spike for a few months now. They reached out to the channel a while ago and I've been using it ever since. It replaced Spark Mail, which I was using for years at that point. And I haven't used the Apple Mail app in so, so long. I wanna say since like 2015. But then if we go to my next mail client, that's just Gmail. And I use Gmail for work because we're a Gmail or a Google suite, or I think it's called like Google Workspaces now <laughs> for all the people that are in the Google world. And then if you go down the line, Safari is there, pretty self-explanatory. We have Google Home, and this is what I use to kind of manage all my smart home devices. So I have some Hue lamps in here. I have my actual thermostat, the living room, so I can get eyes in to see exactly what's going on in there. And I just like the Google Home aspect because it's a nice little hub and I've been in there for a while. I had been meaning to get into HomeKit, but I just haven't had the time to kind of set everything up. And that's kind of how it is. Like once you're in one ecosystem, it's really hard to leave it. So for all my smart devices, I'm pretty much in Google. Then if we get out of there, we have the next few apps here, which is just files. Again, pretty self-explanatory. I've been practicing using Affinity Photo to kind of help set up the thumbnail game a little bit so you guys can see what's going on here. But it's just files. So I have my on what's on my iPad. I'm signed into my Dropbox. I also have my iCloud Drive. And then again, all my basically just LumaFusion is what lives on the iPad and then some auxiliary applications, but I really rarely have media on the iPad itself. And then my notes application, you guys know what's good with the notes. As you guys can see, this is, this is pretty much what the script of this video is, a little thumbnail idea here too, which is nice. So Apple Notes is what I use for all my YouTube and a lot of work stuff as well, even though I'm trying to migrate more and more to Google Keep and Microsoft OneNote and things like that, but Apple Notes, it's just so easy when it goes from one device to the other, like my iPhone, my iPad, my Mac, everything has it. And I think I can even look it up on my watch if I really wanted to. But then for my music player of choice, I have Spotify. And I've told you guys this a million times, Spotify is the only application that is keeping me from doing the whole Apple One situation where, you know, you can do like a terabyte of iCloud, you get Apple Music, Apple Arcade, all that, all that stuff like Apple TV, because you'll see that I'm subscribed to Apple Arcade already. I'm subscribed to Apple TV Plus and I have 200 gigabytes of iCloud. So that alone, I think it's like 20 bucks a month. And for another $10 a month, I can get Apple Music and a whole terabyte of iCloud. And I think some other stuff as well. So it's kind of tough because Spotify just had it for so long and I love Spotify. It keeps getting better. They keep signing more and more people that I listen to from a podcast standpoint. So it's gonna be very, very tough to leave Spotify. And then we have the end all be all, which is LumaFusion. This is what I use to edit all my videos for the YouTube channel. Every single video that you've seen on this YouTube channel usually gets recorded on the iPhone right here edited on the iPad and then exported and then uploaded to YouTube all directly from the iPad. So it's like very, it's a very, very tight ecosystem that relies a lot on Apple, relies a lot on AirDrop and things like that. So I just live in this ecosystem and I absolutely love it. And then if we just keep going down the line, I have Twitter, the app store, and then my settings menu. If you guys aren't following me on Twitter, at NandoPrince93, it's gonna be right here if you guys wanna check it out. I do a lot of my updates on there on iPadOS and all the different updates that are coming out and also video announcements whenever they do drop. So definitely follow me on Twitter if you guys ever have the chance to. But that basically covers my entire doc. So these are applications that I use on a daily basis, whether it is for work or leisure or anything like that. But then the next six applications that I wanna talk about that are on my home screen, they're kind of random because they're, they are used on a daily basis, but they're used for different things, right? So I have Affinity Photo, which I've been learning to use over the last couple of days. It's a little bit difficult, but at the same time, very rewarding once you actually figure it out. So. Definitely look out for some cool thumbnail gains with Affinity Photo. Then we just have YouTube TV and YouTube, a lot of YouTube consumption and things like that. I use Slack for work for communication, which I use literally on a daily basis, on hour by hour, minute by minute. And then my two favorite games on the iPad, NBA 2K and Marvel Strike Force. NBA 2K with Apple Arcade, absolutely awesome. I love it. The graphics are very similar to like PlayStation 3, maybe Xbox 360, or maybe even like Xbox One, somewhere in the middle, right? If somehow they came out with a generation in between, that's what I would consider NBA 2K to be. And I absolutely love it. I use it with my Xbox controller all the time. And this is very, it's a very familiar game to play and I've been playing it nonstop. And then we have Marvel Strike Force, which isn't part of Apple Arcade. And it's kind of like a turn by turn RPG kind of League of Legends situation. 
where you just fight other Marvel characters with teams of five, go back and forth, and then you got to like level them up, unlock new moves, power them up, and it's kind of like a never ending game. There's a lot of paywalls, or not even paywalls I would consider them, just ways to speed up the game because you can still do everything. I've not spent a single cent on this game and it's been two years. And I wanna say that my team is pretty badass. But those are all my main applications that I use on a daily basis. And then usually the applications that I'm testing are just on the next page. So as you guys have seen some of my Microsoft Office videos, been testing all the test flights for those applications, been playing around with RuneScape because they brought out a new version of RuneScape. It's not, it's no longer the old school RuneScape even though that's still an application. And then also shift screen, you guys have seen my video. More updates have been coming out for that, but I definitely test it out on a daily basis to see what new updates have come out. And then you have the app library in here, which is nothing too crazy. More apps that I test out or apps that I rarely use, like shopping apps, maps I never really use, you know, Airbnb is in here, things like that. But that's pretty much all my productivity, leisure, and my subscription applications. Again, most of the intensive task ones do cost money. So Affinity Photo costs money, LumaFusion costs money, Spotify is a subscription service, but a lot of the other ones are pretty free, like all my mail accounts, you can get iMovie for free, the games that I have are free, even with Apple Arcade with a free trial. So definitely give it a try, guys. But let's put this iPad away and finish up this video. So that is pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, I have a good array of different applications. So my main creative ones are just LumaFusion, and hopefully Affinity Photo, I'm gonna to switch to it full time because I think I'm getting the hang of it a little bit. And if you guys want, I could probably put together some beginner tutorials. I know there's a ton already online, but if you guys wanna see like my learning process and how quickly or how long it took me to pick it up, by all means, I'd be more than happy to make a kind of like a quick Affinity Photo tutorial, at least for like thumbnails and things like that. And then you, but then I have my leisure apps like Spotify that I listen to for podcasts, Netflix is on there, YouTube obviously, YouTube TV, especially for the live sports and things like that. So again, the iPad Pro is, I guess the words you could use are jack of all trades, master of none, right? Because there are pro level apps already. Like people are so confused or, so people are yearning for like Final Cut Pro and like a real Photoshop alternative to the iPad Pro. And it's not until those applications come out that they're gonna consider the iPad Pro a pro level device. But look at this channel. Look at what people have done with the iPad Pro. You can run everything from the Microsoft suite to things like Affinity Photo, edit 4K, 8K, like red raw footage on LumaFusion with very little to no hiccups at all. Like I run 4K 60 at all times or 4K 30. Again, zero hiccups, renders real time, exports faster than real time as well. And it still hasn't even been optimized for the M1 iPad Pro. And that's just LumaFusion. And then you have things like Affinity Photo, which I'm just now learning the power of. And you can see that, that everything renders in real time. So there's no lag or delay. And you can kind of touch things up and add things and remove things very quickly without needing to wait for everything to render. And then of course with that mini LED, HDR content is awesome. It's really hard to complain. The blacks are really, really dark, especially for that type of technology. And overall, it's just been a pleasure to use the M1 iPad Pro. I'm gonna have a two months review or like an in-depth long-term review with the M1 iPad Pro, but the way it can be summed up is if you don't have a 2018 or a 2020 iPad Pro and you want one, M1 is gonna be an awesome experience. But if you already have a 2018 and a 2020, I really don't see a reason to get that M1 iPad Pro because 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros can pretty much run everything that I showed today. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Comment down below. Give me like your top three applications that you cannot live without. I guess exclude things like the internet browser that you use. I kind of want to know some applications that you use that maybe some people haven't heard of. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time. Peace.